Good afternoon, everybody. This is Debbie Q, and you're listening to The Right Shoe. The Right Shoe is a podcast about all things strange and unusual, especially when it references a death. And this one is... Whoo-wee. It is... Well, we don't know, do we? It's definitely strange and unusual. And... Ultimately, I I do have a definite opinion on what I think happened. And of course, as we know, with a missing persons case, there's nobody that can say they're absolutely right because nobody knows. Nobody knows truly what happened on the night of August 23rd, 2009. This is the case and the disappearance of Tony Sharpless. Let me get my stuff together and let's take a quick break. Hi, I'm Chelsea, the host of Crime and Crime Again. On my podcast, I cover lesser known true crime cases. I tell the stories that you may not have heard before. Join me in bringing light to the stories of the missing and murdered and being a voice when their own has been silenced. You can find Crime and Crime Again anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. For those who liked the collaboration of the Springfield 3 between me and Lyndon, we're going to do the Memphis 3. The 3 seems to be our lucky number here. And uh, and then we're going to do a, a UK one. Now, this case, I don't know how this missed me because it happened very close to me and it happened not too long ago. It was in 2009. Tony Sharpless went missing, never to be seen or heard from again. This case is right up my alley because of certain aspects of it. When I was young, I was a huge partier. Came from a little neighborhood in Royal Park that was a big party in place. And then Kensington, which is an even bigger party in place. It was just fun. You go to a party, you know, but there are times, I think I told this story one time. I know I did, in fact. And I often think of this because I could have been killed and nobody would have ever known what happened to me. I was at a U2 concert with this guy who I met at work. He was a real a-hole, turned out to be. I went to the two different U2 concerts. One was fantastic. The next night I went to, it was my birthday and they both, seriously, they both happened to get me U2 tickets for two different nights. And the other guy, I won't mention his name, but it was awful from the beginning. I just, we weren't clicking and I I did not like him. I mean, he was just, I, I don't, I don't even know how to put it. Like he was just not fun. The point is, is that I had gotten out of the car and I thought he was going to tell me to get back in the car. He took off and just took off, left me at this concert, which was very far from my house. So that is why this particular one reminds me of a lot of people had a problem with this girl. Her name was Crystal Johns. And I didn't because I saw a little bit of myself in her, you know, and I said, well, no, that can happen because I, I, you know, I was left at the concert. Nobody knew I was at this concert. I hadn't told anybody. And then I was walking around the parking lot. I found two guys from Scranton, never met them before. I said, can you give me a ride home? And they said, yes, but they could have killed me. I mean, I didn't know them. I, I, they looked nice. And they were nice. They were very nice. Whoever they were, thank you for driving me home. The point is, is it happens. God, it still ticks me off to this day, that whole incident. Regardless, that's why I associate with this story. Not only does it involve partying, but it involves getting out of cars, being told to get out of cars. And this is the case of Tony Sharpless. Tony Sharpless was from Downingtown, Pennsylvania. She grew up, I, her father had died at an early age. Her mother's name was Donna. Her stepdad's name was Peter Navel. He raised Tony and her sister Candy. She was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. 
which is an intense disorder. I, I know a few people with it. And the, the manic part, as much as you get done and are happy in the manic part, it's just as rough as the down part because you are so manic, you can't slow yourself down. And until you get the right medication, it is a, it's not this great. You know, people think the mania part, because you can stay up for a long time, you can do things, but it, it's, it's not the greatest. I've seen people in a manic episode, and it's pretty rough. It's a tough illness. So in young adulthood, she was diagnosed with this. And, and you know, they tried different medications and stuff. And eventually, they did find medications for her. She, she was arrested in 2008 uh, with DUI. But her mother always said that she thinks she used drugs and alcohol to self-medicate, which I... Def, I very much believe, you know, people with anxiety tend to self-medicate. A lot of people self-medicate because you don't know that you can use a, a drug that will fix it if you're using the wrong medication and actually can aggravate the situation. She went in April 2009 to a rehab. I believe Crystal Johns, who was with her the last night of her life, said that she saw her in her state of panic and she just she said it was just unbelievable very frightening when she was in rehab it really seemed to help her and her sister candy also agreed with this it rehab whatever they did there they really found a medication combination that worked and she went to nursing school and she worked with infectious diseases at Lancaster Hospital in nearby Lancaster Pennsylvania and it, you know all was good she she had a baby early on 17 years old her mom said it was never a big deal she just said I'm having this baby and you know it worked it, it, you know, there was not like this, oh, you're too young. It just worked. So everything was kind of looking up for Tony. The money that she earned at her job paid for her tuition at the Brandywine School of Nursing. Kind of kept to herself. Didn't party much. Especially with medication, you do have to watch, especially with alcohol. Alcohol and medication can really lead to a very toxic combination. I think if you have medication, you should kind of just try to do that medication. Even smoking pot or there's so many different things out there nowadays, uh, mixtures of CBD, THC, everything. I don't even think that's so bad to mix with it, but alcohol, it's there's a different alcohol really can set something off it's not it is never a good idea to mix alcohol with any medication it really isn't it could kill you uh, i hate to keep diving off but there was a story an old story of karen ann quinlan uh, i don't even know who remembers her now she was big back in when i was young there it was somebody she had going on a diet and she was taking Valium and she went out and drank one night and she went into a coma and she was in a coma for like it was well over 10 years and it's a shame because she never came out of the coma she she eventually died Karen Ann Quinlan was like the big uh, no-no for drugs and alcohol I think the diet that she was on because Valium and alcohol I mean it doesn't sound like that, and, and um, the amount she did. But it, she did go into a coma. Specifically, that was all they found in her system. But the, she went on a diet. And I think that doesn't help either, not eating anytime, which probably aggravated this situation too. The evening of August 22nd, 2009, there was, I guess, she had had a friend named Crystal Johns, and they had had a falling out about 10 years prior. The falling out was never too much delved into, but they didn't talk after that. And Crystal Johns supposedly had a few dings on her record legally for harassment charges. I don't know what that... The, I'm not sure. I think that led to the distrust in her just that fact but i'm not so sure that uh, you know who knows what that story was i just know that she that was in her past and then one night i guess a little, little kind of out of the blue she asked tony if she wanted to go out party and she hadn't been partying in a long time crystal wanted to go out now i will say that 
and this is of absolutely no dig at her or whatever, but you can kind of see, you know, there's an episode of Disappeared about this subject. When she's talking, you can, I think, and I don't mean this in a bad way at all. I, I, Crystal John seems like a little bit of a troublemaker. Not in a bad way. Just, you know, that kind of person. And, you know, a fun troublemaker. I don't think her mom took it as such, or even her sister Candy, because what happened was Candy and her mom, and especially her stepfather, he was very alarmed by this, and he 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 didn't think that Tony should be going out that night. He just did not agree with this. But the mom, you know, because she wanted them to watch her daughter. They were like, what should we do? And then finally, said, what are we going to do? And she, she, she's been working so hard. Let her go. We'll watch the, her daughter and, and then let her get out. So Crystal Johns comes over. They, I guess, they get to, uh, they take Sharpless's black 2002 Pontiac Grand Prix sedan. They went to John's house in West Fallowfield Township. I'm not even sure where that is. It's probably near King of Prussia because they went to ICE, a club in King of Prussia. Then they went to Center City's G Club Lounge nightclub. It was Old City that this G Lounge was at the time. I think they changed the name, but I do believe a a remnant of it is still there. Old City is very close to South Street. I mean, it's literally kind of right there. It is, it's, it's a nice little section. And they were having, you know, they were having a good old time. They were actually, now accounts kind of differ in this. They got into the VIP lounge. Here they met Willie Green of the 76ers. And they actually, it was Green's brother who had invited them to to go back to his house. First of all, he invited them to come to the VIP lounge, but I think John said it was before they went. Green said it was after because they had to get their accounts afterward. Regardless, they went they went to this VIP and Crystal John said they were having an absolute blast. They kept talking about how much fun they were having. Now, she hadn't seen Crystal John's in a long time, so you figure she was probably having a blast. You know, you're partying, you haven't been out in a long time. The only problem is she hasn't, she hadn't slept in a very long time. Her medication, I believe, was, she either missed it or was needing it soon. And her mom was always concerned because the reason they think what happened what was to happen happened was because of the combination of alcohol, the medication or lack thereof, and the lack of sleep. And she probably wasn't eating all that much. I mean, if you're partying, I, God, I, I, we didn't even eat when we used to go out clubbing. I mean, I, I didn't even think of food. But it always made it worse. The first thing you would do in the morning is run and get breakfast because your stomach ugh, after a night of just partying so i think that's what led to this incident that happened they were invited to willie green's house and that was in lower marion township gladwin pa and it's it's in the main line if you go all the way up to the end of the boulevard in philadelphia like the boulevard's pretty long you go all the way up And then you get to City Line. There's like a Saks Fifth Avenue, which I don't know how it is now, but back in the day, this Saks was awesome. There was a guy who worked there. I don't like saying people's names unless they tell me I can. But he worked in the Chanel section, and he used to, he was fabulous. He used to, oh, this guy was so excellent. He he always showed me the best stuff they had, the the best perfumes that come out. Well, not just Chanel, anything. If I wanted a purse... Like, I got a purse on eBay once that was really cheap, and it was a Chanel, and I wanted to make sure it was a real Chanel. If I wanted it authenticated, he would do it for me. I always liked going into the main line because at that time, their stores were pretty awesome. I've heard they've since, they're not as good as they used to be. I don't know. I haven't been there in a long time. This is where, kind of where Gladwin is. It's a little up, but I'll tell you one thing. Driving out there, especially at night, I don't know if when even when I was younger, I to go partying somewhere, I had to be where I knew where I was at. I don't know if I would have went to Gladwin 
because I think I would have been nervous. But I'm I'm putting too much of what I would have done. So they go to Gladwin. They're having an okay time there. Everything seemed fine. Crystal said she went into the pool. She said she was literally diving into the pool, and when she came up, her um, either Willie Green or some one of his friends said, Crystal, you got to get in here. Your friend is freaking out, and I think she needs to go. What had happened was, I think Tony was starting to get pretty drunk. They were playing a game called Taboo. Tony had made a... a she had said something that Willie Green had took the wrong way. And I guess he called her on it, and he said he was offended. Now, Sharpless, she was around, you know, not only was she drunk, but she's around a bunch of people she doesn't know. I, I, you know, I don't know Willie Green. I, I would have thought, I would think that he might be a little more sensitive to that, but then he might have been pissed off at whatever she said and not thinking that way. Whatever happened, it, was, it seemed like a miscommunication that really did not bode well because the next thing you know i think tony snapped or he she did snap because crystal said the next thing she knows she started freaking out she was throwing bottles of champagne on the floor crystal was not happy and she was like we gotta go she just couldn't believe what she said. I, I couldn't believe that Tony was acting that way. She said it reminded her back when she was having that bipolar attack and was freaking out. I think she was really taken aback, embarrassed. You know, she's at this guy's house. He's kind of, fam you know, he's famous. He's a Philadelphia Sixer. So he said, you know, it's time to go home. So she, they gathered their possessions. Crystal John's said i just did not want tony to drive she she you know she said as drunk as i was tony was way drunker than me not only that but the people were partying so when they were trying like they went out into the car and tony was backing out people were like oh you know be careful not to hit any other cars you know some people probably felt bad oh you know it was a, it was just like a stupid thing that got spiraled out of control i think had I don't know. I, I don't know immediately after it happened. Maybe if she had said, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean it like that. I, it probably would have just blown over. I, I don't know. It, it does It does seem like a shame that it got so blown out of proportion because this is terrible. So they get into the car and Sharpless is completely out of her mind at this point. And I do believe it, it was that combination. Alcohol, no sleep. I cannot imagine she was eating much. Her medication or lack of medication. She probably needed a dose at this point. It had been 36 hours since she had sleep at this point. So Crystal John said she tried to get the keys from her. At, but they got in the car. She, she ripped them off her and said, I'm driving. And then they get no more than two millimeters away and she said get the fuck out of my car those were you know her words john's did and sharpless drove off so she said she was standing there she was completely horrified she said not only did i not know what to do now i'm in gladwin i wouldn't have known where the heck i was and i lived in philly my whole life but for some reason that whole maniunk glad like any when you even when you get to maniac which is still considered philly i am lost i don't know that area i know every area except for that i mean i probably know southwest philly better than i know that area i i just do not know that area at all and i i don't even feel comfortable there because that's when you're getting out of the city i i feel comfortable in cities i'm not so good outside the city i i, I just feel lost i do i i i don't know why i feel comfortable when there's a lot of people around a lot of neighbors when you get to those no street lights and all that stuff i would have been completely freaked out as crystal johns was now she said they were waving her back in but she was said i was way too embarrassed tony she thought tony was going to come back but she never did so she was standing there doesn't know what to do and she calls her nephew who comes and it's like a 40 minute drive so she he comes and gets her her daughter in the meantime 
Tony Sharpless's daughter somewhere during this time. I think it, I definitely was before they left the house. Her daughter had called. It was I think it was three a.m. Her daughter had. I do believe it was 3 a.m. Her daughter had texted her and said, Mommy, I'm scared. I can't sleep. What's going on? And she said, Honey, I'll be right home. You know, the next day when her mother, when Tony Sharpless's mother had read this, she said, That sounded like the daughter I knew and loved. And, you know, because when she's hearing all this, she was like, What? That is that is a little, it, it sinks. Because I think that happened right before the incident happened that she had texted her daughter. After this time, after like two hours after that phone call, her phone would be turned off and never found again another thing that would never to was never to be found again the next morning john's crystal john's calls candy and she's complaining tony left me there and she said i'll come around later and return some of the items tony had left at chris crystal john's house candy told her that tony had not not come home and Crystal got scared. She said, as soon as I heard that she did not come home, I, I got scared. And she she went to the police to make a report. Now, the family, for whatever reason, they waited a little bit longer. They, I think it was 18 hours before they had filed a report from the time of disappearance till the time they filed the report, which is fine. I mean, you know, I guess they figured she was... Ju- I mean, you, you probably are in shock that I, I never fault anybody for any of their actions immediately after something like this happens because you can even her sister said I, when I went I just couldn't even believe this was happening she said it just felt like it was a, it was a nightmare of course they're mad at Crystal Johns I mean they they've said that she has never approached them and they have never approached her after this whole incident Crystal probably feels bad and the family feels that she has something to do with it and for a long long time I I've read a lot of uh like the online things from back then they really think that either Willie Green or Crystal Johns had something to do with it but Crystal Johns had she had taken a self wanted like she asked for a polygraph because she said the pressure was so bad on her that she had done something to her friend that she wanted this lie detector test now lie detector test yes they it does depend on who's reading it they're you know they're not perfect science they are an investigative tool i i mean i don't know how much stock i put in these lie detector tests you can take like a bunch of xanax and pass them but you know what i don't know she passed it and and i I honestly i'm pretty good with judging people and it just didn't seem like she was telling a lie and they said both crystal johns and willie green were very forthcoming they they willie green they said was more than anxious to help he was probably really upset and then you know he probably did feel bad you know the next day after he's probably like oh you know i'm sure everyone had their feelings of guilt and we should have done this or that you know there was a little part of me thinking well all of a sudden she comes out from 10 years and all, all of a sudden she's missing you know there was a little of that but you know when i thought it through what the heck could she possibly i mean okay did something happen and the whole entire party did something i don't think so i i just it rings true later on somebody else that come becomes a part of this agrees that crystal john seemed genuine so now we're in this thing that they don't know where uh, tony sharpless is her mom she's gone she's gone you know she would have never left her daughter so she did not take off into the night something happened and it did remind me of this the danielle imbo richard patron case which i believe a whole different well you know what (laughs) oh it does kind of seem like this i there's i believe something happened here with tony sharpless i just believe it in my heart i don't know why i can't get away from it where with the daniel imbo case i'm a little more i always had my suspicions of her ex greatly you know for several reasons so tony sharpless is gone 
her mom decided to go to where she was, like to see if she had felt, because the skoo kill, which people around here call the shore kill, because that road is horrible. And it, even when you're sober, I'm telling you, the other night I had to drive home on the Schuylkill. I think it's a nightmare. It is always packed. The way they built that thing is in the, it's just terrible. And there's, like she said, from Gladwin, if you're trying to go eastbound, and I don't know if they changed it since then. It's very rare that I'm up there. But since they, you know, at that time, if you're trying to go eastbound, you would have had to come. It only went westbound. You could only go into Philly or into Jersey. You could not go back west you would have to go around and turn around and she was afraid that she possibly could have done this went down into the water and gone into the schuylkill which that seems plausible the police were a little reluctant they didn't know this texas firm called equisearch they had agreed to use this scan sonar and they found 12 vehicles most of which had been reported stolen. A couple of them were untraceable because they, I guess they scraped, or the, the VIN numbers were completely destroyed. None of them were the Grand Prix. That was kind of a downer. They only did do that one section and she could have driven further. So it the way that is set up, that is much more, you know, in the Daniel Imbo, Richard Patron case, where they were coming from to where they were going, there's not a lot of places that you could just go into the water, especially without somebody saying. Now this, it's a little more secluded. And if she had driven far enough, I could see that happen. I mean, you know, I, who knows? I, maybe her car is at on the bottom of this Google somewhere. That's a possibility. Regardless, they didn't find it where they looked at uh, two weeks after Sharpless disappeared, there's something called an automatic license plate reader. Uh, it sits atop the dashboard in manned and unmanned police vehicles and reads license plates. It does not read the state. It reads just the numbers. The license plate, which was DND7772, that was scanned in Camden, New Jersey, two weeks after she went missing. The Camden police, I don't think they realized the significance. They did not alert Lower Marion until a few days after. And the, the, you know, so the lead took a little while. There's so many jurisdictions. It, sometimes it's frustrating because it's like, come on people, can you snap it up, step to it? I don't think it's as easy as it looks to just be on every case every second and just, okay, blah, blah, blah. you know, I think there's a reason that the point is, is that let's move on. You know, I'm just saying a lot of cases could be solved if there was more money, time, and manpower and cooperation with I, and I don't blame witnesses for not wanting to talk. I, I don't think I would either. In this day and age, get yourself killed that way. I mean, it's terrifying. That's another issue. So anyway, now this woman, her name is Eileen Law. She's a private investigator. And she saw a, a segment on CNN she wanted to help the, the navels however she could. She does keep a dollar. It was a symbolic fee that she took just to be, to take on their case and to make it legal. But photographs of Sharpless are all over her office, and she keeps them there because she says she just wants to be reminded that Tony is still missing. Eileen Law set up a hotline number and a website. Callers started reporting sightings of Sharpless all over the place. Philadelphia, Lancaster, Kennett Square, Conshohocken, beneath the Frank Ben Franklin Bridge. Uh, somebody had called, was doing security in Conshohocken. She lived over in Jersey and when she was going over the Ben Franklin Bridge, she had seen a black car that resembled the sedan that Tony drove, but 
there was no record of that call. Law believed that Sharpless's disappearance had some connection to Camden, especially with this license plate reader. She had been low on gas, very low. I think she had enough gas to go 35 miles. I don't think she had her ATM card. She would have been short on money. This is why I think what happened happened. Now, Law really believes, her theory is that with that license plate reader and everything, she thinks that she either made it to Camden or went into Camden for a reason, yet Candy refutes the part about her sister going into Camden because she said they had went to a concert there. Camden has this, it, it changes names every other week. So I cannot, I I, th- I don't even know what it's called. At the time that I last was there, I think it was called the B&T B and or BB&T. It's an outdoor concert park. And it, it actually, I love going to the concerts there because you can see Philadelphia from there. It's an outdoor, you sit on the lawn. It's, I like that a venue and it's in Camden well they had went there to a concert one day and she said Tony just wanted to get out of there she did not like being in Camden so she said my sister would not have went into Camden intentionally but Law believes that whatever happened when she left that house she believes that she was either made it to Camden somehow or somebody forced her into Camden and she is now a victim of being forced into prostitution, the illegal sex trade. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, human trafficking, I know happens. There was a guy who had gotten caught in Camden for his, they called him Prince. And I I guess he had been caught trafficking. He, He was really in charge of a big sex trafficking ring. Now, so I know it's it happens. Alan E. Brown, a.k.a. Prince. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but I just don't think that it happened here. I have my own, like I said, I have my own theory. But Eileen Law does. She says she's convinced that she's still alive and that there's a possibility they would find her. I mean, hey, if they do, that would be fantastic. I think... Well, I'll I'll tell you what I think happened afterward. After I go through this very strange event. Uh, in December 2012, there was an anonymous letter received. The writer said they had tried to give it to the Philadelphia police. But it's true, the, it, the case is not in their jurisdiction. So the officer there gave them law's address. The writer claimed that they had been contacted by a friend in September 2009, offered five grand in cash to take Tony's car, the Grand Prix, which had been in New Jersey near Camden at this point, and take it to a shop in Boston. If they completed the trip, they could have the license plates, they could have Uh, They also said if anybody needs a paper trip, which law says refers to, it's like a slang to create a new identity. They said if there's anybody in their late late 20s that wants a paper trip, all the information is here and a social security card would be given to that person. The writer said they needed the money and they did deliver the car to Boston. When they re- delivered it, they not only took the license plate, but they took everything out of the glove compartment. And they also found Sharpless's phone, they claim. They wrote down the VIN number. Now, they wrote, um, when they returned to Camden, the friend said that a cop told them that they had to get rid of the car because the cop got into a fight with the girl she died and he needed to get the car out of Jersey. He said, I really don't know what happened to Sharpless. This was still in the letter, but this is what happened to me. And I forgot about it until my daughter was playing with a box in the garage and they found the papers in there. Now he wrote down the VIN number, the last five digits of the VIN number and Sharpless's cell phone number or which was represented as her social security number. So 
I guess the guy got confused or something. The plate number had been widely, you know, there was no reason why he wouldn't have known the plate number. The DND7772 was widely known, but the phone number and the VIN number were not. But you can do reverse look lookups every which way. It is relatively easy to get, especially the last five digits of a car number and somebody's cell phone if you do like reverse lookups. But I, I mean, I, I, I don't necessarily think this person writing this letter was entirely lying. You know, she took this all into consideration you know, there, there there was also several hoaxes. Somebody said they were from the Canadian Security Intelligence Service who ba found Sharp a woman matching Sharpless's description, but it turned out not to be her. And there was a couple of hoaxes going on that, that were not true. But this one with the letter seemed the most valid. And I don't know. I mean, I think about that letter. First of all, Philadelphia has, especially this year, again... 2005, 2009, and this year, for some reason, has been slamming high with carjackings, with use of force of some type, whether it be a knife, a gun. People are getting carjacked to the left and right in Philadelphia. I, I, it all, it always comes around, and that happened to be a very huge carjacking time period. So, I think. I, I genuinely believe this is what happened. I think that night, Tony was low on gas. She was obviously not in her right state. She zoomed off. Maybe she was trying because her mom said she just wouldn't have left Crystal. That's why she was always very, she just, she was very suspicious of Crystal because she said, my daughter would never have left somebody in the dark alone. But you know, in her state, you know, remember, she was embarrassed. She was not well at that exact point. You don't know what someone might do. It, really. I mean, there's things that people do that would surprise their own family members all the time this happens. Uh, you can never say no, they would never do that. Never. Because you, you don't know. There is times when things... I don't know. I just believe that sometimes people will act very much out of character because they're in, they're not in the right state. I mean, she had, she had so many things going on at this exact point. I think she left. I think she was pissed off. I think she felt bad, came back around, tried to find Crystal, couldn't, ran out of gas. I believe she was carjacked. Absolutely. And I think they took her to Camden or... At some point, whether it was before or after they got to Camden, I think they killed her and just got rid of her body, got rid of the car. And why did the license plate reader read it? I mean, there there's all the time stolen vehicles that are left right out in the open for many, many days that are found. That's how they find a lot of cars. I don't think anything of that car being out in Camden, I think that was part of and then when it was read or whatever and then it was in the paper they probably were like come on hustle this thing out of here and that's when the guy that wrote to the cops about taking it to boston I, he said that a cop got into the fight I, I don't know about that part i'm just saying i i really think that she was carjacked killed I mean, pretty fairly immediately her car was in camden for a little bit and then they got rid of it but they had automatically got rid of her. I mean, unfortunately, people, it's not, I hate to say this, but it's not really all that hard to get rid of one body. The car, it was found. I mean, they have instances where there was like a guy from Arizona and he had all these unpaid tickets and this guy from Pennsylvania or New Jersey kept getting uh, these outrageous bills because they, they said you owe all this money. And here it was a, one of those automatic license plate readers reading his digits were, were the same. I hope this makes sense. It, it was a guy in Arizona who had a huge amount of tickets. He didn't pay them. A guy in PA just happened to have the same 
license plate the state was different so he kept getting these bills you know i guess he went to the dmv and they figured out the error but i do believe that was tony's car in camden i do i think i think she really did get uh she fell victim to, to foul play very early on she was just not in any capacity to defend herself she might i mean the person might maybe they even came off as as nice and she was trusting because she was so vulnerable i'm not sure that part of i i just think that she was killed very early on i i don't know why i feel that way but i i feel so strongly that you know just as much as the investigator law feels very strongly that she's alive I feel just as strongly about, I, I don't know, I just get this feeling that she died early on uh, and that car was in the intermittent, like it was ready to get shuffled off to wherever. And they put it as far away, they like, take it to Boston, get rid of it. I, I don't even think necessarily that, right? I think the, the letter probably is legit. They just wanted to get it off their mind, you know, people... They, they feel guilty because they say, oh, well, why did they wait three years? Because it was three years between when this happened and when he wrote the letter. But, you know, your conscience starts to get to you. And maybe he read about it in the paper and thought, oh, my God, that's probably the car that I took. I think that Tony's mom believes the human trafficking aspect. And why wouldn't she? Because that would mean her daughter's still alive. Of course, you want to believe that. I don't blame her. My sympathy is for parents of missing adult children, children in general. I I cannot imagine the sheer torture that is to not know what happened to your family member or your loved one. That has got to be absolute hell. When I saw this on TV, I never disbelieved Crystal Johns. For a second, I thought... Why did she suddenly want to hang out with her after all that time? But, I, I mean, I don't know. And Eileen Law, she um, she was kind of suspicious at first at, of Crystal. And so she went to her house one day. She said, I thought she was going to slam the door right in my face. Here, she said, she let me right in. And she said, I deliberately asked her questions that are meant to trip somebody up. She said she it was you know, very genuinely distraught. And and I feel that, I agree. I, I, she, I don't, she just didn't come off like she was being untruthful. You can tell when someone's lying. I mean, unless you're a really good liar. And she said her story was consistent from the beginning. You know, it, it you, they said a big, thing uh, about truth is ask somebody to tell their story backwards because people are so used to telling the story forwards that you can catch a lie if you ask them to tell it backwards it they'll they'll mess it up because the truth is the truth so you can tell that every which way till Sunday but if you're lying you're gonna have to really think you know I don't know how she she just said she believes Crystal Johns that's a tragic story I hope they find out what happened to her. I mean, that's that's a rough one. And I, 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 when I was watching it, I thought, my God, how many people disappear like this? You know, that's a shame. That that's the story of Tony Sharpless. Coming up is going to be me and Lyndon. We're going to do the Memphis Three. It's not even a story of dissension. We. We both are pretty much on the same page about that story. But there's a lot of things I would like to talk about about that story. A lot. And delve into. Then I still have the Wonderland murders on the roster. I will That I have to do because it's just a crazy story. And I want to do Natalie Wood at some point because of certain things that I'd learned. And I, I really would like to do that. There's a lot coming up, and I'm getting my stuff over to YouTube. It is really getting over there. Please subscribe. It's the right shoe if you plug that in. Now, Pipus is my first one, and I have it on another channel. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get that over. I'm slowly but surely getting all of my YouTube, all of my podcasts are on 
that right now there's 13 of them on YouTube to listen to and I have pictures up there so you know it's like the you can watch the pictures and the story it, it, it's not me talking it's the pictures in the background eventually I think I'm gonna do a few YouTubes where I talk personally you know the right shoe is growing please like subscribe and review it really really helps when people do that and again if you ever want to email me about anything or comment on a youtube page now that's easy enough to do i'll never turn the comments off it's debbie q at the right podcast.com or just go to the right podcast.com and my email is right on the front page and my instagram shopaholic deb 44 dm me if you want that's my most, that's for the social media that I'm on the most with the right show. Twitter is Bookshot Worm One, but I do have the right show. So, you know, however you get to me, you know, the right show podcast.com is the easiest way or Shopaholic Deb 44 on Instagram. So, this is Debbie Q with the right show, and I will be getting back to you soon. <laughs>